If you're a typical Queens person like me, you would think twice before venturing into Brooklyn. To us, it is a land of mystery, full of places where we can't find on the map. And in terms of food, we are even more lost. What is there to eat in the Borough of Kings? For a place so vast, we must split up this episode into North, Middle, and South. So sit back and let us do the eating. First stop is Northern Brooklyn, Williamsburg in fact, where one of my favorite Japanese restaurants is located. Behind a shady door hides Zenkichi, a sushi-free Japanese restaurant that focuses more on traditional small plates. I'm joined by Nathan as we set course on the 8-course seasonal feast, the omakase. So first stop in our Brooklyn tour is Northern Brooklyn, where we go to one of my favorite restaurants, Zenkichi. My guest is Nathan. Hi, I'm Nathan. Uh, Nathan, most Japanese. I think we'll get better service today. You guys and us are in for a treat. Because we are gonna try the tasting menu of omakase. Can I explain what the uh, omakase is? Omakase just means like, I guess, recommended. Uh, uh, you know, like recommended whatever they have. Usually, you know, it's kind of like a set menu, whatever the specialty is, whatever the time of season is. You know, if you go into like a sushi restaurant or whatever and you order, like, you know, uh, I guess they check on the special of the day, that kind of thing. So it's like a set, you know, they can give you like whatever they want, you know, whatever they think it's best during the day. So I guess it's winter time, so they have, um, you know, some winter stuff. I think they uh, called it, uh, this omakase they call it um, Santo omakase, you know, a few months of winter omakase or whatever. Alright, let's do some tasting. I'm surprised I don't see like seaweed and little tofu cubes floating around. Right now Tony is drinking his miso soup. So tell us how it is. Is it me or the miso soup has a slightly more fishy taste compared to the miso soup you have? Um, Japanese well, yeah, I think uh, you know, in addition to miso, they usually add like like little flakes into the soup. So I guess there is uh, this, like a uh, seafood kind of taste in addition to the miso. Right. This is the sashimi of the day. This is the scallop sashimi. Like a grilled Second part of the sashimi is the monkfish for glass. It is the liver of the ugly fish. Yeah, the one that lives on the bottom of the sea. It's, um, it's the one Nathan has been waiting to try. It's supposed to taste like a rock. Like, you know, I think winter is the best season for uh, anki. So I think lung fish is called anko and then liver is anki. There's, there's texture to it. And I think it goes well with the pongsu. Um, the it's really delicate. It breaks apart easily. I like the flavor. The first bite was kind of fishy, but the bite afterwards starts to taste better with each bite. And then this is the yellowtail tartar. Tartar. Yes. Chopped up fish. So the yellow tail that's why fashion is just very very bad. What's the shredded? The little shredded. Oh, it looks like a... Um, Fuzhou? Yeah. What do you call it? Bean curd? Uh, bean curd skin? Something, something like that. Yeah. Alright, this is the... This is the Shiwakoto Shungiku Temple. The creamy cotton milk. And green chrysanthemum leaves as Hi, <laughs> 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 
It's, <laughs> it's hot and green. Yeah. Chrysanthemum yeah. leaves temper. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Like you hit it. Hit it like hit it. But the meat is okay. You hit it well. You hit it at the end. The meat is okay. I mean, it's not dry. It's nice and juicy, but otherwise it's just salmon, I guess. And here is the last course. The organic ground beef omelets. TBT loyal fan. Uh, a little bit, but but more Japan made. It's sweet, is it? Yeah, it's really sweet. And when you put the uh, I guess the dried ginger and whatnot into it, it's a like, nice and zinged to it. Red fruit jelly for you? Uh, it's for me. Oh, for you? Thanks. Okay. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Dude, he's exactly grateful. <laughs> smash it up and turned it into jelly. And then my tofu mm. smashed up into tofu. Let's see if it tastes like tofu. Um, it's not too heavy. It's light and it's mildly sweet. To end the meal. Time for a change in location and change in cuisine. We head to the middle of Brooklyn to Park Slope where a homey Greek restaurant is located. Athena is a small family owned restaurant that shares recipes passed down from generation to generation. I'm joined by Anna as we both try Greek food for the first time. So our appetizer is mussels cooked in red wine. Now I'm really picky with mussels. These meats are kind of a little tiny, but taste and texture is passable. The meat is soft, not too chewy, so that they'll cook it. And it has enough flavor. The red wine gives it a good flavor. Here's my lamb shank entree. And what's good about it is it's, when it's like really cold outside now. My mom always told me to eat a lot of goat and lamb when it gets cold and apparently it helps me keep warm. Let's get ready to try. Well, it's right off the bone. Alright, so really moist and the meat breaks apart so easily. It's really flavorful too. Athena gives you a whole braised lamb shank along with a rice like pasta called also. The outer bits of the lamb was dry, but the closer to the bone, the more moist and fatty it got. Overall, the dish could have used a little more seasoning. What's this one? The spinach pie. How's the spinach pie? It's very crispy. Like the top part is very crispy. It's not that sweet. I thought it's going to be sweet, but it didn't. So I guess because the cheese, I think the potato cheese round out the taste of the spinach because I'm a fan really of spinach. The Spartan combo consisted of several traditional vegetable and meat meat pies. They were crispy and flavorful, and my personal favorite was the majuka with the layers of lamb, eggplant, and mashed potato. Our last stop is near the bottom of Brooklyn, in the Chinatown there known as 8th Avenue. When the weather gets cold, the best dish served is in a pot, a hot one. One hot pot establishment that raises the standards is Mr. Hot Pot. There are very little traditional hot pot places that everyone eats from the same pot, and it's not a buffet. At Mr. Hot Pot, you and your friends share one pie and order by the plate. Also, unlike any other hot pot place I've been to, this one's very clean and puts a lot of effort at pleasing the eyes and the mouth. I mean, just look at their sauce display alone. The quality of the food and the soup is excellent, and each dish was always decorated. Whether you call it hot pot, da bin lo, or huo huo, it is a Chinese favorite of the winter time. So we end this episode off with some friends and family and cuddle around the boiling soup pots and feast like kings in the borough called kings. <laughs> <laughs>